Hey everybody, Rob Ferretti here, back from ADO3. The Adventure Drive trip uh, just concluded. I hope you enjoyed watching all the bull run videos. Uh, it was my first time driving west across the country, so it was my first time seeing all of that, and I hope you enjoyed the journey. Today, I'm gonna talk about rebuilt and salvaged title cars. Nobody wants their car damaged. Nobody really wants to own a previously damaged car. Why, I don't know. I understand people have a little bit more sentimental value towards cars than I do, but that's their prerogative. Now, when somebody's car gets damaged, the thing that they want to do, especially when insurance is, insurance is involved, they love to nail the screws on. They want the most expensive rental car they can get. They want the repairs. Everything's got to be factory, factory, factory. They want that estimate as high as possible so they can try to work out a deal with the body shop, whatever. It's a game that's been taking place for many generations. The insurance companies are aware of it. It's just not worth the headache of them fighting it. But that causes a lot of cars to get totaled out that shouldn't be totaled out. Uh, I had a rental car, which is a, four, a 458, it was a 2013, 2014, whatever it is. Um, that car went out, it had frame damage on it, but it was just a little structural, not even a structural piece, it was a structural piece to keep the, um, the front bumper flush. It wasn't a performance structure piece or a part of the frame that actually affected performance. It was just all for the cosmetic look of the fender lining up. That car technically has frame damage, and I guarantee somebody bought it, tried to ship it through Florida or something like that, fix it for $5,000 and sell it as a non-frame damaged car. That's just what happened. But if you look at the video of the car here, and this is the major impact here, which is the, the wheel it needs obviously clearly a new wheel, it's cracked. Um, but even this fender and light and everything like that, it's not that far off. It looks like it was pushed a little bit. And I think on the short term while we're ordering parts, we can re-secure, re readjust and re-secure this back to the car, or at least attempt to. Um, the only thing that's preventing us from renting this is the wheel and then the airbag has to be replaced in this door, which I don't know if it's uh, custom ordered from the factory with the leather. Um, but other than that, the car itself. Scrape it right there. The rest of the car is good. That's. Uh, There's no reason that that car should be listed as a frame damaged car. It's a stupid little cosmetic piece. That car sold for about $70,000 less than what it was worth. And I guarantee somebody was able to fix that car for five or $6,000, end of story. And that's a great buy for somebody. Somebody is now driving a car which is just as good, even if the title is branded as a frame damaged car, that car is as good as any other 458 on the road for a fraction of the cost and somebody should drive that till the wheels fall off. This car here, I'm standing next to my NSX. This is also a rebuilt title car. And it's my first time buying a rebuilt title car, but I'm a very rational person. I can look at something and say, okay, let me look. And if you have a documented repair history or a documented repair on a car, it's nothing really to worry about. Like I'm more concerned about like if a frame is twisted, if it went into a pole sideways, something like that would really be like, no thanks. I like to drive fast. I want the car to drive straight and performance wise. I want it to be 100% on par with anything else. This car, there's a guy, Mac Ninja, on NSX forums. All he does is rebuild NSXs. Uh, this was one of the cars he rebuilt. I saw step by step everything that happened. There was uh, the back end was whacked in the back corner and a little bit in the front corner, but I saw every single piece that went on. I saw the repair process. And normally I wouldn't buy a salvage car just for my own personal whatever. But, uh, but this car, I was specifically, when I was looking for an NSX, I was looking for a yellow or blue, preferably this exact color, this exact 02 to 04, 05. Um, six speed Targa, I was very specific. I didn't want a blue interior, I didn't want a yellow interior, but other than that, I was fairly open. And there were no Long Beach Blue Pearls, which this is available. I jumped on this car as soon as I saw it. I had my friend, Michael Bauman, who is a big NSX guy. He's got like an 8,000 mile, 05 orange, which is probably worth a trillion dollars by now. But uh, I saw, I had him, he was in Chicago, he checked out the car for me, drove it, said everything was on point except for a couple of rock chips and everything, which to me means absolutely nothing. And I am extremely happy with this. I bought this car probably $15,000 less than I would have had to pay for a comparable car at the time because of the rebuilt title. It drives perfectly, it drives, performs as well as any other NSX on the road. I'm happy with the purchase. So the same with the guy who bought the 458. Another good uh, example of when to buy a frame damage or salvage car is when exotic cars crash, they're much more expensive to repair. 
and especially when you have the weenie owners that try to milk every, oh yeah, it's a nick here, I'm gonna need a whole new front bumper. And some insurance companies, it's just not worth the fight. So a lot of cars get salvaged out just because of the parts cost on them when they shouldn't. The SLR McLaren, for example, that the guy hit in the front on that side, broke the wheel off and, and there was a little fender damage and everything like that. That car was worth $200,000 at the time, maybe two and a quarter. And according to the parts prices through McLaren and SLR, it was like $450,000 in damage. And that was such a repairable, if you look objectively at the actual damage it was on the car, that on any car is a repairable, very simple repair. And on that car, it ended up totaling out the car. So now you have a car that got totaled out for no reason when it just the unreasonable price of parts was too high. So that being said, if you do your homework, if you, if you have a car that's damaged, there's a better way and there's got to be a better way going forward because a lot of people, there's a lot of money to be made and lost in repairing and fixing and selling damaged cars. A lot of it is shady. The car industry is very sketchy with odometer rollbacks, flood repairs, damage, salvage title, changing the titles over. There's a lot of cars out there, probably of the cars that are crashed, probably 40 or 50 percent of them people don't even know they were crashed. They don't show an accident history on them. You can't trust just the car fax or the auto check that you see on eBay or stuff. We've had cars that have been in accidents. We've sold it and it, the auto check and car fax don't even show the accident even though we sold it as scrap. So stuff like that takes a while to register. Sometimes people get surprised by stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you just want to sort of do your homework as best you can. Uh, there is a path forward in the future somewhere. Uh, one of those that's just starting to see the light of day is Vinwicky, uh, Ed Boley, and the guy who did the cross-country record works down selling Lamborghinis in Atlanta, did this. And he's got something that's trying to catalog the use of a car from sale to sale to sale and all the individual owners across the board. It's a good start. I mean, that's really what you should do. There's every product out there is to try to like give somebody a reason to devalue your car. There's no real product out there that increases the value of the car. Like with baseball cards and everything else now, they have to be GSA, PSA, GSA, whatever it is, certified in order for the card to have full value. I think cars, you should buy something. It's a subscription. You enter all the details on the car gets checked out every once in a while, all this stuff that increases the value of your car. Hey, yeah, see, it was in an accident. Somebody hit it in the parking lot. It repainted here. First thing a wholesaler does is he walks up and hits it with a paint meter and says, this car was in an accident. There's cars that get damaged before they even get to the dealer to be sold initially. They get damaged on the port. They get damaged on the boat. They get painted and sent over and you have no idea they were damaged beforehand. So and then you're going to own a car that's never been in that, an accident that somebody's going to think is in an accident. It's going to devalue the car. It's all a big game. So if you objectively look at a car as a fun toy and you can look at the repair process, see if anything was wrong with it and pay an accurate price for it, you're in good shape. Be very careful. You don't want anything that was twisted or anything along those lines that's going to be a potential safety hazard or something that somebody eBayed together. Uh, that's all going to cause you trouble in the future. But if you see repair invoices with factory parts, good stuff, even good aftermarket parts, uh, it may be a good deal for you. Something to keep an eye on. Don't discount the rebuilt or salvage title cars. As long as you go out and do your homework and make sure you're getting something good and do a PPI on it, you could be driving something sitting pretty for a fraction of the cost somebody else is paying. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.